Hello and welcome to this viewer challenge. One of the questions sent in by a viewer is the area of a rhombus question. And she says, what is the area of a rhombus that has two 120 degree angles and a longer diagonal measuring 10 meters? All right, let's take a look at this on a diagram. All right, this rhombus has 220 degree angles. And in a rhombus, we know that one of the properties is that the opposite angles are congruent. So this is the larger of the um, two different types of angles we have here. So I'm going to label it this way. And we also know the longer diagonal, which would be this one, of course, is 10. All right, the next step is to remember how we do find the area of a rhombus. Now, a rhombus is a parallelogram, a special kind of parallelogram that has four equal sides and some other properties, of course. And we could use the parallelogram area formula, which is base times height. Well, if this is the base, at least the way I've drawn it here, okay, we don't know that um, distance right there, do we? At least yet. And height, we don't know the height either coming down this way here or this way here. However we measure it, we do not know that, at least yet. Well, that, that is actually the hardest way to do that. So we're going to use the other area of a rhombus formula, and hopefully you've studied it. The other formula is area of the rhombus equals one-half the product of the diagonals. Now we know one of the diagonals, it's 10, across this long way here, and we're going to have to figure out this other diagonal. That's all we need. So that's the best and the better formula to use. Now let's go ahead and draw in this other diagonal and let's figure out what we know. Just by being a rhombus, what happens when we draw these diagonals is that they intersect each other in perpendicular segments. Okay, that's a property. Also, this half of the diagonal is equal to that half of the diagonal, and this half of the longer diagonal equals this half of the longer diagonal. In other words, those diagonals not only are perpendicular, but they are bisectors of each other. So now we have four right triangles. Okay, we're going to put that to use here in a second. Also, the uh, diagonals as drawn bisect these corner angles. So if this was 120, that means that this here should be 60, and this here should be 60. So now you'll see that when we kind of fill in all the information around, we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, um, four of them actually, inside this rhombus. All right, so how does that help us? Well, we know the longer diagonal is 10, and if we bisect it, that means that each part here is actually 5. Okay, we don't know anything about the shorter diagonal or even what half of each part is. So let's go ahead and redraw one of these right triangles and figure out what we know. All four of those triangles are a special right triangle called 30, 60, 90 for obvious reasons. And what we need to remember is if we want to know the relationship between the short leg and the longer leg and the hypotenuse, this is what we find. The hypotenuse is always twice the size of the shorter leg. So I'll call it for now x on the shorter leg. That means the hypotenuse is 2x. Also, because of the Pythagorean theorem and the way this works for right triangles, the longer leg is radical 3 times longer than the short leg. So the key here is the short leg. Once you know the short leg, you can kind of work backwards and figure out the longer leg and the hypotenuse. All right, now in our diagram, we know that the longer leg of these right triangles is five, okay? So what we're gonna have to do is kind of work backwards here. All right, I've redrawn it to kind of clean it up a little bit, but the longest leg is five. Remember, that comes from half of this longer diagonal. So if we're gonna go from the longer leg to the short leg, we divide by radical three. We have to go in reverse. Now, to, that is what the short leg is going to be. So let's go ahead and write that down here, five over radical three, but we need to simplify it. Um, there's something called rationalization of the denominators in a fraction, meaning we can't have a radical 
in the denominator of a fraction. So we get rid of it by multiplying both top and bottom by the same radical because radical 3 times radical 3 on the bottom gives us radical 9, which is 3. In other words, the shortcut is the radical sign basically kind of cancels out or disappears. Now mathematically that's not what really happens, but um, that will give us a 3 in the denominator. And on the top we would have 5 times radical 3. So our short leg is 5 radical 3 over 3. I know it's a mess, but we're going to keep it in radical form to keep it exact. Now remember that the short leg is actually um, half of the hypotenuse. In other words, we double the short leg to get the hypotenuse. All right. We actually don't need to worry about that. Um, it would be 10 radical 3 over 3. But notice that in our triangle or our rhombus diagram, that would be the sides, all four sides of this rhombus, which don't enter in. We actually don't need to know that information. All right, so let me write this in. The short leg is going to be 5 radical 3 over 3, 5 radical 3 over 3. Now we put those together, of course, because we need the entire short diagonal, and that's going to be 10 radical 3 over 3. So let's complete our formula here, and the area of this rhombus is going to be one half the product of the diagonals, and so the let's go with the longer diagonal first. That's going to be 10. We knew that, and we're going to multiply it by these two put together, representing the short diagonal. That'll be 10 radical 3 over 3. All right, let's simplify this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just do 1 half times 10, okay, to uh, maybe speed this up a little bit. So it would be 5 times 10 radical 3 over 3, which is, multiply the constants there, so it's 50 radical 3 over Three. Now, in your classroom situation, um, you if you're asked for the exact value, that would be that. Leave it in radical form. If you need to change it into a decimal, figure out what to round it to, and that would be your approximate answer. But I'll keep it in that form right there. All right, so believe it or not, this challenge problem was made more difficult because we're only given part of the information. And in order to use the product of the diagonals area formula of a rhombus, we had to figure out the missing diagonal. Alright, hope that made sense to you and thanks for watching.